Hey guys, it's Janet Vosky. Today I'm going to do a poetry reading, dissection, and discussion of one of the entries within my second poetry and prose book titled X. Before I do begin the video, I did want to take this time to explain the new series that I've started, which focuses on mental health. My aim with creating this series is to create an open and safe space for discussion. Throughout this series, I will be dissecting entries within my books and discussing how and why I wrote them the way that I did. This includes what the entries mean. I believe we all have an amazing opportunity to learn from one another throughout all of our hardships and experiences, and this is my way of doing that. Being able to understand how other people deal with difficulties can help us through ours. While I was editing my video, I also realized I completely forgot to mention one very important factor and driver behind me beginning this mental health series. The purpose for me even writing about my experiences and sharing it and having them published into books was to ensure that other people could read my work and find the words that they may not be able to articulate for their emotions or the experiences that they are dealing with. I knew that I wanted to write about it to help other people feel like they are not alone. I knew that's why I needed to publish my work. I never want anybody to feel alone or like they can't get through the difficulty that they're facing. So having my books published and now doing this series talking about my work, the way I wrote it, why I wrote it, and articulating the different perspective that I had during my difficulty in the hopes that it will help at least one person. All right, now I will read an entry from X, but before I do that, if you are not familiar with this book, this book details my relationships, whether that is platonic, romantic, or family relationships. For me, the main thing with this book is my journey to liberation, which means a true understanding of myself from all these difficulties that I had experienced. And the way that I believe I had done that was to consistently strive to become a better person. I, I could talk about this all day, so without <laughs> talking too much in detail, I'll begin reading one of the entries. If you are following along at home, the edition of X that I am reading from today is the 2021 published version, and the entry is titled Bones, which is on page 80. My heart beats, secure, fragile. It bleeds compassion. It isn't just worn on my sleeve. My heart is seen within my eyes, written on my face, felt with my hands. I give you 100%. How high does it speak for me to think you do too? Or for you, is it low? I learned people do not offer the same capacity you give. Did you know offering to do something is a way to fight in fixing it? Your heart beats, unsure, hurtful. It bleeds revenge. You show me with your actions. You express to me no words. But all you've got is a closet full of bones. Before I begin dissecting it, I want to quickly mention the reason why I selected this entry for this video is because I believe that this for me is about understanding you should not really have any expectations or think other people have the same heart or intentions as you. With that said, Let's begin dissecting. My heart beats, secure, fragile. The way I've written that, I love it because it's like a heartbeat. Secure, fragile. <gasps> it bleeds compassion. Is also me saying, it's like when the heart beats, it sends the blood through the body. That's me saying that that compassion runs through my blood. It's like, it is literally a part of me breathing. So I'm really trying to paint a picture of an intense, compassionate character that I have. It's later contrasted, and I'll talk to that in a second. So the line, it isn't just worn on my sleeve. It's an elaboration on the fact that I'm really trying to emphasize how compassionate I am, and that it is within me. It is not just an external appearance that I want to show people. It is literally who I am. Let me continue. My heart is seen within my eyes. Like the saying, the eyes are the windows of the soul. It's written on my face, so soft expression. With any relationship, whether platonic, romantic, you want to have that open connection. You want to show them that you are compassionate and you care about them. So I'm saying here that it's not only seen within my eyes, but also within me, but it's written on my face 
and felt within my hands. Every single line, the further down you go in this entry, it's essentially expressing how deeply compassionate I am because I've expressed it in many different ways. I give you 100%. How high does it speak for me to think you do too? I love this line because it could get so confusing to try to explain it. And I remember when I did write it, I was kind of sitting there like, wait, does that even make sense? Does it? It does. <laughs> Let me break it down. <laughs> so I give you 100%. The way that I'm just going to quickly show you is a visual because I'm a visual learner. So if I'm up here and this is my 100%, someone else's 100% could be down here but it's not up to me to make a judgment on them or have an expectation on them. But before writing this poem, I thought everyone was up here with me. I thought everyone gave as much as I gave. I thought everyone loved as much as I loved, but that's the harsh reality. And that's the whole purpose of me expressing and pointing out this particular entry because we should never expect other people to have the same beliefs, heart, etc that we do. So going back to where it says, I give you 100%. So I give you my 100%, which is an abundance. How high does it speak for me to think you do too? This is me saying, I hoped, I wanted, or I thought you had the same heart I did because I think highly of myself and rightly so. Someone who is compassionate, that's an amazing trait. So, how high does it speak for me to think you do too? I want this person to be here with me. I want their capacity to be here with me. So it speaks highly for me to think that they also gave 100% at my capacity. I hope that was articulated well. I understood it in my head. <laughs> it continues. Or for you, is it low? So there's a clear definition between the way that I'm realizing I am versus this person is. By saying, I learned people do not offer the same capacity you give. It was me saying, I know my capacity is up here and I'm willing to give you my whole capacity. But through this situation, I learned that sometimes people are here, sometimes people are here, but sometimes also people are here. The whole purpose behind me writing this is to not have or hold any expectations on what other people are like. The flip side of this is knowing that someone's capacity might be here, but they give you this much. So there's also that perspective of it where it, it, it is most definitely very difficult to deal with, but also it's going back to the point of not holding any expectations and just knowing the person you are, being okay with the person that you are, because that is the main thing. Okay, let us continue. <laughs> Did you know offering to do something is a way to fight in fixing it? These lines are really interesting to me and I really wanted to add them in because it seems so left field. When you are reading it, there's essentially a theme. This is what your heart is like. This is what I'm like. This is what I expected of you. And this is what I learned. And then suddenly, did you know offering to do something is a way to fight in fixing it? And the reason why I wanted to add that in is to express that knowing the person I am, I will try to fight to fix an issue in a relationship, regardless what type of relationship. I will offer to do something for the person that I think would be able to resolve the matter. By me writing that and writing it as a question, it's a way of me expressing that this person is not comprehending the fact that I'm actually offering to do something for them to try to resolve the matter. It's also a really good reminder of many different people's love languages where someone could offer to do something which is an act of service whereas someone would just want to spend time with you which quality time so it's also understanding that people are different when dealing with anything and that was my way of really trying to do something to fix it when we continue it says your heart beats unsure hurtful it bleeds revenge again i love the way i wrote this because it completely contrasts the very first three lines where i'm referring to myself by saying my heart beats circular fragile it bleeds compassion whereas this one is unsure hurtful it bleeds revenge so it's a complete black and white contrast also added these three lines about your heart beats unsure hurtful 
it bleeds revenge in this part of the entry because again like I said earlier I'm, I'm painting this picture of what I'm like what I expected what I learned but also did you know I tried to fix it by doing this certain thing and then suddenly it's oh but your heart is this way and therefore it's not gonna work what I tried is not gonna work because that's the way you are and I can't change that Finally, the last four lines, you show me with your actions, you express to me no words. So by writing this, I am expressing I know this person very well. But while I'm trying to make sense of the situation and try to fix it, I'm also saying that this person is being very unwilling. This is what their heart's like, they're revengeful, they're spiteful, and in this situation, you show me with your actions, by expressing to me no words, which is essentially saying they're not trying anything to fix it. They are just being plain spiteful. The last two lines, but all you've got is a closet full of bones. I deliberately wrote it that way again. <laughs> Wanted it to reference my first poetry book, Bones, and it's not because it was about a romantic relationship or whatever. It was about what bones meant, saying, but all you've got is a closet full of bones. It's me saying I know that this person is unhealed from their past pain and hurt. I wanted to write it this way to not only mean the literal meaning of someone who has a closet full of bones, which is like very secretive, but in this case I did want to refer it to my first poetry book bone, which is about my healing and grieving process through a, an intense heartbreak. So I wrote it that way because after this experience, I learned that this person was behaving this way because they had not healed from their past pain. They were projecting all their pain onto someone who is very compassionate and wanted to fix things, which can be quite common, unfortunately, with these situations. This poem to me is a really good reminder of not being able to control others. The only thing you really can control is the way you are in your heart, the way you behave, the way you react to things. So you could try as much as you can, but in the end it can also be up to the other person if they are willing or unwilling to reciprocate that. Look, listen, you can have expectations on someone, but you will be disappointed if you do. So that's why I wrote this and that's why I wanted to particularly dissect this entry. Also, it can be very difficult when you get to know someone and the relationship is quite new. They're amazing, they're so responsive, they're doing things for you, like, I'm, I don't know, I'm just making things up. Relationship progresses, you get to know each other a little bit more, situation may change, feelings may change, and they become different people or they behave differently towards you. So they've already created that expectation where you're kind of like, oh, well, this is how you treated me before, why is this suddenly not happening now? You should still have expectations for yourself. And what I mean by that is knowing where your line is. Knowing where your boundary is in terms of what you will and won't accept from other people in your life. Okay, so the main reason I wrote this is because when I was going through this particular situation, I felt like I was alien, almost. Because I didn't really understand why someone was treating me this way when I know what I'm like and the way that I treated them. It was also regarding the capacity in me giving my 100%, also trying to actually comprehend what that meant. What I mean by that is I, I did not know that everybody's capacity to behave certain ways or capacity to love or have compassion, etc., was different. I genuinely thought everybody's capacity was where mine was. And that was very hard for me to face because I'm, like I said, very compassionate, very sensitive to other people's feelings and in turn, sensitive to when there's a difficulty being presented to me, where I found that it was unjustified. Also in saying this, no judgment. Don't judge the people. People will go through their own experiences in their own time and hopefully for the better. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope the discussion helped make you feel a little less alone. I hope that my books and videos can act as a source of inspiration for you and show you that there is always a better alternative. So that entry was from X, my second poetry and prose book. If you are interested, this book is available on my website and Amazon and other book retailers. I'll leave the links down below in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, it's Janet Boski. Today I'm going to do a poetry reading dissection and...
<laughs> what's the word <laughs> what who messaged me okay i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it on do not disturb <clears throat> What was I saying? No, seriously, what was I saying? I'll be right back. Hello? Seriously? <laughs> Hurtful. It bleeds revenge. <laughs> 